shall cross the barren desert, but you shall not die of thirst. You shall wander in safety. shall speak your word for an end, and I will understand. You shall see the face of God and Be not afraid, I go. If you pass through the raging waters in the sea, you shall not drown. If you walk amidst the burning flames, you shall not be harmed. If you stand before the power of hell, then Blessed are you poor, for the kingdom shall be theirs. Blessed are you that we belong, for one day you shall love. And if wicked hearts and souls and hate you all because of me, Blessed, blessed, blessed are you. Be not afraid. I go before you always. Come, follow me. And I In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Dear sisters and brothers, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that the soul of Tom Fogarty, your servant and priest, whom you honored with sacred office while he lived in this world, may exalt you forever in the glorious home of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples. On this mountain, he will destroy the veil that veils all peoples. The web that is woven over all nations, he will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces. The reproach of his people, he will remove from the whole earth, for the Lord has spoken. On that day, it will be said, Behold our God to whom we look to save us. This is the Lord for whom we looked. Let us rejoice and be glad that he has saved us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to our first reading is the Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. We know that when the earthly tent in which we dwell is destroyed, we have a dwelling provided for us by God, a dwelling in heavens not made by hands, but to last forever. 
Therefore, we continue to be confident. We know that while we dwell in the body, we are away from the Lord. We walk by faith, not by sight. I repeat, we are full of confidence and would much rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. This being so, we make it our aim to please him, to please him whether we are with him or away from him. The lives of all of us are to be revealed before the tribunal of Christ so that each one may receive his recompense, good or bad, according to his life in the body. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today is a day of great joy for the whole Pauline community around the world because a number one of our members has finished the race, completed the course, and has entered into eternity, a time of great joy. However, there is a tendency amongst the people of God God, that when a nun, a brother, a priest, a monk dies, uh, to presume that they go straight to heaven and they aren't uh, in need of our prayers the way other people need the prayers. Well, as Gershwin said in an old song, it ain't necessarily so. <laughs> now, we need to pray today. We've gathered for prayer. 
There are four types of prayer. First is the prayer of adoration, and we give thanks to God for being God, and we rejoice in that. And then there's the prayer of thanksgiving, and we're giving thanks to God for having created and formed a father, Tom, and having us had the opportunity to know him and to love him. And then there's the prayer of lamentation. And that too, we put our grief before God. If there was no lamentation, there would be no love. When people lament the loss of a loved one, it shows their heart is bleeding at the exact spot that it was attached to the person who has died. But finally, there's the prayers of petition, which we have to offer for Father Tom. Throughout his life, he prayed more for the souls of purgatory than anyone else I knew. On a daily basis, he prayed for them over and over. And so in order to honor him, we should pray for his soul too. And if he has sprang into eternity and is seeing the face of God at this moment, the prayers for him will simply redound on those souls that need the prayers the most. But we should pray every day for him as he prayed every day for the others who are going through a purgation process. Now, sacramentally, he was certainly prepared for his death. He went to confession frequently. In recent months, he made a general confession of his entire life. And he said his divine office on a daily basis. So in that sense, he was prepared. And he had another devotion, praying for those who died unprepared. He prayed all the time for people around the world who would be dying with no preparation to meet the judgment of God. Well, ironically, he wasn't prepared to die himself. He was prepared to live. He wasn't giving up. He wanted to do one more thing for the divine master. He wanted to do one more thing for the church. He wanted to do one more thing for the society of St. Paul. He wanted to do more for the Holy Family and its members, the people he loved the most on a spiritual plane. So he wasn't prepared to die. He was prepared to live. But the Lord had a different plan, calling him back home to himself. And now he's in a position to do more for us than he could have ever done in this world. Now his life was one of suffering and service. His mother died within the first year of his birth. His father just handed him over to his three aunts, the three sisters of his mother. And he was raised by these three hardworking, courageous, and pious women. And he learned a great deal from them by their example. But early on, asthma struck him. When he was six, seven years old, he struggled to breathe. He couldn't play with the other kids. It was a great burden. Now, he was the smartest kid in his class. And he said his main mistake was he was not smart enough to hide it. <laughs> and so he became the victims of bullies, really bad bullying. Whenever the teacher would ask a question, who could answer this? He'd say, me, me, me. And he'd say, oh, of course, Tommy, what's the answer? And then after school, he would get a different answer from his classmates. <laughs> And one time he was so brutally uh, abused and beaten that he had to take an entire year off from school. And his aunts had to more or less homeschool him and try to repair him for a year. Uh, early suffering. But then he, in high school, he went with the presentation brothers who kept everything under control. And he loved the brothers. He thought they were doing a great job. And he contemplated, I wouldn't mind being a brother, but asthma makes it impossible. 
graduates, gets a few jobs, and then he finally gets a good job with the electric company and he wanted to work in Cork. But they sent him to some other place that he hardly heard of, Athlone. Goes to Athlone and one of his supervisors, recognizing the spirituality of Father Tom, said, you know, I know this priest, Father Simone, in the society of St. Paul, I want you to meet him. And he met Father Simone, and Father Simone said, why don't you join the society? You could work as a writer, an editor, etc." He said, I'd love to, Father, but it's impossible. I'm just too sickly. Uh, Father Simone didn't take that uh, as a definitive answer took him to a doctor that he knew and said, tell him he's healthy. Well, <laughs> <laughs> and so he went off to Italy to be formed in the congregation, the Society of St. Paul. He brought with him already a great amount of spirituality in the rosary, the stations of the cross, daily communion. That was already a part of the fabric of his life. And he said, when he got to the society for the first time, and he was heading towards the dining room, he thought all the students would be whispering in hushed silence topics of philosophy and theology. And when he walked into the dining room, there was an enormous uproar, a cacophony of sounds, as young men were laughing, debating, yelling, you know, passing the pasta back and forth. <laughs> And for a year or so, he had good health, but then his health declined rapidly, and his fears began to mount that he just couldn't make it physically. But blessed Alberioni saw something in him, kept him under his wing, kept encouraging him, and wanted so much for this young Irish cleric to succeed, and he succeeded indeed. He was ordained in July of 57, it would have been 60 years this year. He was a person of great devotion and great zeal for the church. There's no need to go through all of the things he accomplished in life. You could see that in the obituary, especially the extended one that has just come from Rome. But behind all of his work was that suffering and service motif. He spent one year in Staten Island, and there was a famous diocesan priest, Monsignor Florence Cohelan. And I happened to casually remark to Monsignor Cohelan, what do you think of Father Tom? And Cohelan said, he's a tower of strength. He could see the steel in uh, Father Fogarty's backbone. He could see the dynamism there of a man who truly was a believer. When he arrived in Canfield, he took over from the beloved Father Felix uh, the institutions, the Gabrielites, the Annunciationists, but in a special way, the Holy Family Institute to which he gave every waking hour to. His suffering here physically was over the years pretty intense. His hip was disintegrating, he had a hip replacement. Then, not long after that, he fell and broke his femur. Then in rehab, they dropped him and he broke the femur again. And then after he got through those breaks, he was back here and he was coming into the chapel to say the Stations of the Cross. Whenever it was physically possible, he prayed the Stations every day. And as he's coming in, he trips, falls, breaks his shoulder. And it was a bad break. And he said, I don't understand it. Already he was beginning to revert to a simple theology. He said, why would the Lord do that to me? If I was going to do something sinful, I could see him, you know, knocking me down. I was going to say the Stations of the Cross. Why would that happen? And I said to him, and Father Tom falls for the third time. <laughs> <laughs> and he had that same reaction. He had a, a, an enormous uproarious laughter at that. In fact, he repeated it to quite a few people. But he was a man that had a great deal of suffering, a great deal of devotion. He was dedicated 
to the Holy Family Institute, and he would grieve for those who would die or would have difficulties in their life. And with the conflicts and challenges that come into every marriage, even the most holy ones, he would feel the pain that was going on. And he was an unusual man in a sense. He had a beautiful tenor voice, but he wouldn't sing the traditional Irish tunes you would think that an Irish priest would sing. He would sing cowboy songs. <laughs> and his favorite would be, I've got spurs that jingle, jangle, jingle, as I ride merrily along. And I always think, oh God, I thank you that I'm single. <laughs> because he could see the burdens that would be a part of every married life. And he would pray for the people in the midst of that holy struggle that would be so important in his life. Now, as he enters eternity, as he goes before St. Peter, the traditional vision of the way people enter the heavenly kingdom. I could see him going up to Peter and say, you know, you were a married man, you're eligible to join the Holy Family Institute. <laughs> We'd be happy to have you. <laughs> but now as Tom enters his eternal rest, we should be grateful, thankful for having known him and pray for him that one day we will meet him in eternity where every tear is wiped away, every sin obliterated, and all of us could rejoice in that one family that has no end, the family of the people of God from every race and nation. God, the Almighty Father, raised Christ, his Son, from the dead. With confidence, we ask him to save his people, living and dead. For the church, that we may extend God's love to all who are on the fringes of society, invite them to come and see Jesus and find acceptance and friendship in the Christian community, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Our brother Thomas, who shared in the priesthood of Jesus Christ, that leading God's people in prayer and worship, he may be brought into God's presence, where he will take his place in the heavenly liturgy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the members of the province who are ill, or are in nursing homes, that they may be aware that they are in our they are our precious assets in the apostles of prayer and suffering. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our deceased relatives and friends, and for the deceased members of the United States province, that they may intercede for us always, for our, apost our apostolic apostolate, and for an increase in vocations to the priesthood and religious life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for the Pauline family, that it might always recognize its role as bearers of these special gifts of the Spirit to all the church, the following of Jesus Christ, way, truth, and life, devotion to Mary, mother, teacher, and queen, and missionary zeal of the Apostle Paul, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And in the quiet of our heart, any intention we may have, Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, our Redeemer, you willingly gave yourself up to death so that all people might be saved and passed from death into a new life. 
Listen to our prayers for our departed brother, Father Tom. Forgive his sins, and by your glorious power, give him light, joy, and peace in heaven, where you live with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that through these holy mysteries, Father Tom Fogarty, your servant and priest, may behold with clarity forever what he faithfully ministered here through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take these all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. My Lord and my God. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take these all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. My Lord and my God. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity together with Francis of Hope, your job, Bishop, and all of the clergy. Remember your servant Thomas, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Blessed James of Barioni, Saint Paul, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. taught us to call God as our Father, and so we have the courage to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, 
and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, Father George. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, Father George. Can, can you do that? Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. the body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Our communion hymn is found in our missalettes. Prayer number 235, Pondus Angelicus, Jesus, our living bread. That's prayer number 235. Christ. The 
body of Christ. Certainly, we would like to thank everyone, especially our priests here who have come to celebrate the life of Father Fogarty. And we have a very uh, special concelebrant with us today, uh, our Superior General, Father Valdir from Rome. Father Valdir. Oh, the shin. <laughs> uh, this is the first time a superior general ever was at the funeral of, funeral of a Pauline member in the United States. We're so grateful you're here with us today. Okay. Thank <laughs> you. Let us pray. Having received the sacrament of salvation, we implore your kindness, O Lord, for Father Tom Fogarty, your servant and priest, that as you made him a steward of your mysteries on earth, so you may bring him to be nourished by their truth and reality as unveiled in heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. We will now have the final commendation.
with faith in Christ Jesus, we reverently bring the body of our brother to be buried in its human imperfection. Let us pray with confidence to God, who gives life to all things, that he will raise up this mortal body to the perfection and the company of saints. May God give him a merciful judgment and forgive all his sins. May Christ the Good Shepherd lead him safely home to be at peace with God our Father, and may he be happy forever with all the saints in the presence of the <coughs> Eternal King. Please join in singing Saints of God. Saints of God, come to Father's aid. Come to meet Him, angels of the Lord. Receive His soul and present Him to God, to God the we say, Lord, save your people. By your coming as man, Lord, save your people. by your birth, Lord, save your people. by your baptism and fasting, Lord, save your people. by your sufferings and cross, Lord, save your people. by your death and burial, Lord, save your people. by your rising to new life, by your return in glory to the Father, Lord, save your people. by your gift of the Holy Spirit, Lord, save your people. by your coming again in glory. Lord, save your people. Father, into your hands we commend our brother. We are confident that with all who have died in Christ, he will be raised up to life on the last day and live with Christ forever. We thank you for all the blessings you gave him in this life to show your fatherly care for all of us and the fellowship which is ours with the saints in Jesus Christ. Lord, hear our prayers, welcome our brother to paradise, and help us to comfort each other with the assurance of our faith until we all meet in Christ to be with you and with our brother forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. Amen. Please take your missalettes and join in singing our opening hymn, prayer number 287. 
Hail Holy Queen enthroned above. That's prayer number 287. Hey, 